These chickens right here are my second and last batch of broiler chickens for the year. There are 30 here in this movable chicken tractor here. And uh, we do typically do a chicken a week, one whole chicken a week. So that's 30 weeks of chickens here. Chicken. So 30 chicken dinners. <laughs> and uh, there is quite the difference in flavor when you are really raising animals the way that they're supposed to be raised. Have you guys had grass-fed, farm fresh chicken meat before? If so, let me know in the comment section below because there's quite a difference in flavor. Even beef too. This year we really have been uh, we getting our meat from a farm just right down the road, Barrier Farm, and the, the difference in the flavor is tremendously different, just like it is for eggs and other things. But these chickens right here, I'm moving them around right here in our garden bed. We were growing things here earlier this year and uh, we just let some things come up. And the chickens, as they are doing what they do, living their chicken life here, they're also eating up the vegetation and the old crops that were in here before. There was a little radish here that didn't quite do well. But we do need fertilization to this bed. We need to add some more fertilizer to this bed. And what, way to, what better way to do it than to do it with the broilers as well as raise the broilers at the same time. So, uh, yeah. Another thing that we do here oftentimes is we'll bring food, greens, to our animals. So, right here we have some comfrey, which is also a good fertilizer for your fruit trees, but it's also some nice veg for your animals as well. And this is a really good plant to have around. So there you go, eat that up. One of the themes that I've really been thinking on lately is the importance of raising animals. For most of our time here on our homestead, we mainly have focused on growing vegetables. However, animals are so important. Raising livestock it's so important. If we didn't have them on there, we would need to go off the farm even more to get fertilizer that would ultimately still come from animals, whether it be bone meal, blood meal, uh, you name it, chicken manure. It all comes from animals. And uh, just the other night, I had the opportunity to watch a really, really neat documentary movie that I highly recommend suggesting. I'll actually leave it in the uh, a link for it in the show notes below because they're doing a free screening of this movie uh, for the next few days. It's called Sacred Cow and it really is a mind opening movie to watch and just the importance of, of farming with animals and that we need to farm with animals. It's not wrong to farm with animals and it's not wrong to eat meat. That there's a, there's a synergistic relationship that the animals and us and the earth and the plants have and we need one another. So right here is the beds that I have taken them through already and we've just made a progression all the way down here and you can still see some, some feathers in there. There's your, your uh, some of your bone meal there and as well as just the manure that's down there. I know that's a little bit harder to see. You can see a little bit maybe right there. So day by day as I'm moving them through the beds here in the garden they're eating up the grass and the weeds but at the same time they're leaving behind really good quality nutrients and fertilizing the ground it's the way it's supposed to be done and that's something i want to continue to improve on one of the challenges that i'm having with my tractor here is it is wider than my bed so um, in the spring i may construct some smaller more narrow ones to fit inside the bed but as you can see here our beds are 30 inches wide and the tractor here is wider than the beds so and with us having the raised beds which maybe we could do away with maybe we could do most of the walkways i do have some gaps in here so we have to I have to make sure i cover up the gap so that way no predators get in there and kill our chickens but uh we're doing what we can but making progress, making observations along the way. So we'll cover up this hole right here. 
like to use a two by four. And a block. That way it covers up the smaller gaps on the side and the block's able to get the, the bigger gap in the middle and it's hard for an animal to move this block. It's gotta be pretty hefty. And thankfully, we don't have those, those type of hefty predators around, thankfully. Need that block. Speaking of predators, I had this crazy dream last night. It was about a black panther. The kids and I and Lacey, we were off somewhere. It was kind of like another farm or something. And we were walking around. And then I saw off, not too far in the distance, this huge black panther. It was in the dream, it was a dream, but it was like as big as our, our family van. And I was like, we need to get out of here. <laughs> we need a gun or something because there's a huge black panther. And in the dream, it was like, this is the biggest black panther that the world has probably ever seen. <laughs> but, but thankfully, it was just a dream because that block right there would have not have stopped this black panther. <laughs> So right in here we have our layers that we're raising. And you can see they're quite a bit smaller than our broilers, but hey, they're supposed to be. These are egg layers, not meat birds. Now uh, those meat birds don't have much longer here on the homestead, and uh, hopefully these guys have a lot longer. So uh, we're moving them in their tractor as well. This is one of our older models, our clunkier models, so do what I have to do to move it. And you can also see behind here their progression as they've eaten up most of the vegetation there and left behind some good fertilizer. Check that out right there. As well as right there with the feathers. There you go. Micah, can you go ahead and fill those up for me, buddy? Uh -huh. Thank you. All right, so that's two units moved. We have one more to move, and that is our tractor with our meat ducks in it. Peking ducks, just right here at the top portion of the garden. <laughs> And speaking of giant predators, we have one right here. I'm not a predator. <laughs> you just hanging out with them in here? Yep. And I wanted to put you in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> you like hanging out with them? Yep. They're leaving you for food. <laughs> They're hungry. Yep. Not quite as hungry as the broilers over there. <laughs> No, I just eat, meat, meat, and sleep. All right, well, good night. Good day. <laughs> it's not night time. <laughs> All right, this is for the ducks. And also, we have some greens that the kids have chopped up. I don't usually chop them up, but they went the extra mile and showed a little bit of love and chopped these up for them. So uh, I'm sure they'll enjoy it. <laughs> All right, so that is feed for each of the tractors that have our birds in them. Next comes time to give them water. This usually, the whole process usually only takes Mike and I about 15, 20, more, 20 minutes or so. Uh, we can move pretty quickly. But uh, whenever I'm carrying this camera around talking to myself, <laughs> it does take uh, almost almost double time, a little bit longer. Just uh, a little bit more to think about and 
set up the camera and fill up the things and do this and do that but hey it's a uh, part of the love of sharing with you all and uh, a lot of things we do as far as here on our homestead as well as on other homesteads don't feel like you have to do them exactly the way that we do them we're continuing to change things up and make progress as we go and I always have I uh, keep in mind this piece of advice that when I was getting started that a fellow farmer told me he was like Mike I was coming to visit his farm and doing things and seeing how they do he's like Mike this is how I do it and how we do it here on my farm but you may find that when you're on yours you may like to do it a completely different way but that's okay all right, Micah, you got my waters filled up? Mm-hmm. All righty, filled up, ready to go. This one is definitely filled up. I don't think you can fill up any more than that. <laughs> Thank you for doing it. That about there. Yeah. That about there. Yeah, those are filled right up to as far as you can fill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Too. These birds are always thirsty too. One of the things I really liked about the design that I have here on this tractor, this is our newest one, and uh, I've been modifying along the way. It's got an opening here, which I still need to put a latch on. And right now I'm just putting weight on here so nothing lifts up and open it up. But I also have a door right here at the front, so that way we can set up at some point, uh, maybe not with these birds, but on other ones in the future set up uh, some electrified fencing where we could open it up where they could get out and forage and then come back in. I uh, really had that design in mind mainly for the ducks but it would also work with the chickens as well. And then I have the access at the back too. Alright Sally, you ready to get out? Yeah. You got them on your lap this time? Yeah. What you got to do to get them on your lap? Put some feet on your lap or something? Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. All right. Oh, can you get that one, Taylor? Yeah, I'll get it. Ah. And this is one of the things that I don't like about this design is it opens primarily only from the top. And whenever you're opening it up, you're opening it up and it gives them the opportunities to escape. So uh, I won't be doing a fully open top going forward at all. I don't recommend that. All right, so next, if you could fill up the front tires on the lawn tractor and help me out with the project. We're constantly having problems with these tires on the lawn tractor. I'll explain that here in a minute. Still gotta give water to the ducks. All right, the duck water we do a little different. Sometimes I'll use a duck shield, uh, but we're not using that right now. And uh, we'll just fill up the water in the tub, so that way they can submerge their head under the water, which they have to do, or their eyes will crust over, and I'll crust around them, and it's really not good for them. And actually, we were a little late getting them water when they were small ducklings, being able to do that, and they were having some crust going around their eyes. So uh, definitely keep that in mind whenever you're raising ducks. So we'll just fill up our buckets right here, and then when they need water, we'll just pour it right into their tub there. Ready? So, I've had these tires replaced, plugged, and we're constantly filling them up with air. Sally, you're doing a great job. Thank you for filling that up for me. So this little unit has come in handy big time, but I have decided to just go ahead and buy the flat free tires. They sell them in the size that fits the front tire, 
but regretfully not the back. So we're at least, we usually don't have problem with our back tires. So I'm going to be buying those really, really soon. So we won't have to worry about it again. I actually have a video that I saw online of these tires and it had all of these nails in it and different things. And you could still use the tire, it just doesn't go flat. So looking forward to that. But right now we're just doing what we have to do. And uh, Sailor, right now, if I could have you drive the lawn tractor, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be getting, gathering some block for a project that we're gonna be working on with our current egg layers right in here. All right, on this property, we have a number of blocks that have been here for years. My father-in-law has been in construction and masonry business for years, and even his father was as well. And uh, there's a lot of different block all around the property. And uh, right now, I'm planning to use some of it for this project that we're getting ready to do. And uh, some of it's back here in the woods. Just shows you how long it's been here. But whoa, check this out. I originally thought that that was a tree, but no, this is a vine. This is the biggest vine I have ever seen. It may be a grapevine, I'm not sure, but look how thick it is. And it goes all the way up there. Well, anyways, here's the block, some of the blocks that I'm gonna be using. So uh, I need more than that, but I'm, this is the size that I wanna use. I'll be transporting it through here, over there, to where Micah and the lawn tractor are. So the plan and project for this area is to set up an overwinterized system here. And since it's at a slope, I'll be using the block to make a retaining wall to help keep things in, as well as we'll be setting up caterpillar tunnel, high tunnel in this area to help with doing that. And I've really been inspired to do that uh, for some time now. And here recently we were at an event, a Weston A. Price event at Polyface Farm. And during that event, Joel Salton did a farm tour of his winter systems on the farm. And a lot of that includes this, the overwinterized systems that he has for his chickens and his ducks. And that includes having them in high tunnels, heavily mulched high tunnels during the winter time. And that, the purpose of that is one, to have an area for the animals to go in in those colder temperatures. And a part of that, having the mulch to help them, a heavy deep mulch so that way they can stay in a sanitized area, which will help prevent things like disease, as well as, as they're in there over those months, their manure and their droppings and their feathers and everything else, really adds to the fertility of the soil, which we really need in this section right here. We tried to grow a number of things here like corn and squash and a couple other things during this past summer and it didn't do well at all. And we're gonna really work on increasing the fertility here and they're gonna help us do it and we're gonna set up a system, an overwinterized over system for them to do it in. Right now we're just gonna do a rough layout. Start moving the block over is the main thing. Well, the day is running out on me, but at least we're getting things gradually set up for what we're gonna do. And just laying it out right now, it looks like it's gonna be about three block high down here at the bottom and the back. Good thing Sailor didn't run me over there. <laughs> but that's really gonna provide some really, really deep mulch here. So that mulch will be really deep and that'll give them really good bedding to work in and scratch in. And as they're doing all that, it just also helps to, to, to sanitize the area as well as work their manure and things down into the ground. So that's what we're going to be doing and we're actually going to be working on that. 
And as you can see in here, the chickens have pretty much decimated and gotten rid of all the green grass that's in here. So providing that mulch will help their area to be really nice and sanitized. As our homestead is continuing to grow and we're trying to do more and more things, uh, we're running into challenges here and there. And one of those challenges is not having a lot of pasture area. And everybody is limited on pasture and green grass in the winter time. So keeping them stationary during the colder months in a warm protected area. And that's another benefit of having them in a high tunnel that, that provides extra warmth for them in there, which will also keep things like their water from freezing. So uh, that's just a, another benefit. Well, I can't stop thinking about that Black Panther that I was telling you about earlier from my dream. There was also a part in the dream where it was coming after us and we were hiding under these vehicles and one of the vehicles that I was in under, and I think Josiah and Micah were with me, it was like reaching under there trying to get us like <laughs> And I started just jabbing it and poking it and piercing the sides out. But uh, thankfully I woke up and <laughs> somewhat after that and it was just a dream and we were all okay so whew, thankfully it was just a dream and speaking of okay a number of you have asked how i've been doing since a couple days ago i wasn't feeling really well i was my stomach was bothering me i was laying down energy was low and i was just like man this does not feel good well i ended up seeing uh, a doctor integrative medicine doctor uh, named dr ferris and he was actually on our channel uh, a couple years ago speaking about a number of health topics but anyway I spent a good amount of time with him we talked about my diet and a number of other things he did a, an examination and uh, we, we strongly believe that it's gallbladder so I'm doing a number of things to, to making a number of changes to hopefully resolve and not have those issues again so no I don't have the C Rona I think it was just gallbladder so should be good to go <laughs> So that's an update for you. Oh, and another update. We also have finished, mostly finished, installing our mini split system. And it is working very, very well. I uh, actually had to have some other, another friend of mine who's an electrician help Evan and I finish the job. And then we had, another, had, the, had to have an HVAC guy come and uh, feel the lines. But we're heating up now, heating up well, and uh, enjoying it. So uh, that's that. Well, we got some more things to do out on the homestead coming up here pretty soon, speaking of, and uh, as well as processing the ducks coming up. So make sure you stay tuned for that. I'm calling it a wrap, calling it a day, feeling good. Hopefully we're gonna stay well, stay good, and uh, apply a number of the things that my integrative medicine doctor has encouraged me to do, as well as my homeopath. And uh, I don't like to call them alternative medicine because Real medicine is the medicine that goes back years and years before what we consider modern medicine was the integrative, the natural medicine. And uh, that's what we're doing, as well as some diet changes. So, see you next time. Thank you all for checking on me. So, uh, live long and prosper, as Spock would say. <laughs> 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 <laughs>